Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Michelle Osario and this is my friend Kali. And Hi today guys. we're going to be talking about relationships and red flags. Anything from romantic relationships to and marriages to friendships, um, family members, and even relationships with people at your work, with your manager, etc. And if you don't already know, a red flag <laughs> is another term for a warning sign a sign of impending danger. So we're going to begin by talking about one of my best friends and her past relationship, focusing on the abuse she experienced and some of the red flags to look out for, which I'm sure many of us will be able to resonate with. Now, when people talk about domestic abuse, it doesn't necessarily mean domestic violence. It's not always physical. There's psychological, mental, emotional, financial and verbal abuse. There's online and cyber abuse, which is when your partner um, will threaten to upload private nude pictures of you, um, stalking you online, knowing all of your passwords, or controlling your social media, for example. Not all abuse leaves bruises. So I'm going to use code names. My best friend is called Chloe, and her ex-girlfriend is called Julie and she's the one who's the abuser. Now, at the time, I thought Julie was really friendly, kind, polite. She had a really, like, soft nature about her. And the reason why I'm sharing this is to give you an idea of the type of person that she was, because not all abusers are your stereotypical alpha male holes in a can of Stella. Now, Chloe and her partner were on and off for six years, and Chloe lived with her at her house, with her two kids. Um, now with Julie, everything had to be on her terms. It was either her way or the highway. She always wanted to be in control. And when arguments did happen, she'd turn it around on Chloe, I was gonna say her real name then, and put the blame back on her. It was always Chloe's fault. And Chloe's been punched in the face, she's had scratches on her neck, she had her hair pulled, had a TV chucked at her, had a glass chat her and had it smash against the wall. And Chloe said if it wasn't pinned down, it would be launched at her. Again, it would be her fault. Julie would say, if you hadn't done this, that and the other, I would have reacted that way. You caused me to do this. Uh, she was very manipulative. And even if your partner hasn't put their hands on you, but they're still throwing things around, breaking your phone, your belongings, smashing things up, please know that is still classed as domestic violence. Even intimidation, that's abuse, getting in someone's face and provoking them. I watched a reality show recently with this girl, Karina. She was about 19, 20 years old at the time. And I don't think I've told you this, but her boyfriend locked her in the bedroom and blocked the door so she couldn't get out. And afterwards she defended him and said, but he, he didn't put his hands on me though. And her grandfather replied, okay, it's not a physical beating, but it's a mental beating. And that's the thing, abuse doesn't look the same in every relationship. I know people who ha have had their partners piss on them, pour a drink on them, um, spit on them, had their clothes destroyed, and they don't even see it as abuse because there's no physical marks or bruises. And a lot of people don't realise it's abuse because their partner will make them feel like it was their fault, like they deserve it. Which brings me on to the subject of gaslighting. Now, gaslighting is not only lying, it's also twisting it around to make the other person doubt themselves and doubt their reality. So I'm going to do an example now with Callie. So tell me, I'm going to gaslight him. So tell me that my top is black. Your top is black, Michelle. No, it's not. No, it definitely is black. No, it's blue. What are you talking about? I can clearly see that the top is nah, black. You're seeing things, mate. You're going mad. And then that's usually followed by silent treatment. And the abuser is so good at lying, they will make you start to question yourself. And I'm going to share a clip with you now from Dr. Romani, who explains gaslighting really well. 
Gaslighting is a form of manipulation where you really kind of get power over a person by doubting and invalidating their reality. You deny their reality. Mm -hmm. And when you deny someone's reality, 90% of people are like, maybe, maybe they're right. Maybe I didn't say that. Right. We doubt ourselves. When it happens repeatedly, you feel like you're literally going crazy. Yeah. Right. You no longer believe yourself. Mm -hmm. The only person who can really gaslight you is someone who either has some power or who you already trust a little already. Yeah. That's why family members gaslight. That's why partners gaslight. Right. So it's not just, gaslighting is not just lying. Gaslighting is lying and then twisting the knife further yeah. so you feel crazy. Could it also be in a form Jeez. of like you're in an argument and they're like, I never said that. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's a oh, classical you're like, yeah. form of gaslighting. Yo. Do I need to be recording our but conversations? Yeah, exactly. oh, that's the, there it is. So the first time someone says to me, I'm going to start recording my conversation, I'm like, you're being gaslighted. It's that yeah. simple. Or when you feel the need to show someone, like, there's the text, text. Right. you are being gaslighted. Yeah. Because you feel like you need proof. When you feel like you need to bring an evidence base yeah. for your feelings, you're being gaslighted. I actually used to gaslight my ex years ago. He was very straight-laced. And during that time together, I was a smoker and he didn't like it and I used to lie about it. Um, he'd kiss me and could obviously taste that I had a cigarette and he'd confront me and ask me and I'd be like, no I haven't, what are you talking about? And with gaslighting, if you feel the need to not only lie but to also make the other person feel like they're going mad, then don't be with the person, including me, like Michelle, if you're lying about smoking a fag. Don't have a boyfriend that's so straight-laced. And for people who feel the need to cheat and lie, just be single. <laughs> because cheating, yeah, ready, go, go, go. Yeah, can I just interject there? Because yes. um, I was thinking, what if, obviously smoking is, is deemed as being bad, isn't it? So obviously he it wants- depends. It does. It doesn't depend because it's a health issue. We all know that there's no way someone I don't can say. I mind if you smoke too. No, it, no, oh. not minding is something different. Oh. But for the health reasons itself, it's mm. like it's something totally different. Yeah. It's like taking drugs. Okay, some people might say it's okay. Yes, I don't mind if you take drugs or if you smoke or if you drink alcohol. But what it does to your body is bad. So maybe for the person, if it was a case where he was actually looking up for you for your best interest, as in health wise, and he thinks that smoking is bad, it's gonna obviously have a bad effect on you long-termly yeah. or whatever, that, that's the reason why he feels that you shouldn't smoke, then does that make it kind of all right? Because he's not like- no, it's, it's me, it's, I'm the one that's like, should it be gaslighting though, like, like, do you know okay, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, but I'm saying for you, should it be like, okay, I know it's bad. Like he's telling me for the right, re he's telling me for the right reasons. Obviously I'm still gonna do it anyway, but you still wanna kind for of- For him though, I feel that it was like a deal breaker. That mm -hmm. like he don't like going out with girls that girls smoke. smoke, he was very yeah, strict. Yeah. Okay. And you knew this, so you had to, you had to, like, no, you I had didn't to, know like, to. After. <laughs> okay. Because when he first met me, I didn't smoke in front of him, so he just assumed I wasn't a smoker. Oh, right, okay. And then we, like, liked each you. other quickly, and it was like, oh, bollocks, you yeah, yeah. smoke. So it went, you like... You know, like, some people, a deal breaker is, like, I, I wouldn't go out with a girl or a guy who's got kids. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't go yeah. out with someone who hasn't got a job. His yeah. deal breaker is, like, smoking and drugs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Everything. I was ticking all the boxes that yeah. he didn't like. So, so, so it weren't like he was smoking when he met you. Then he's saying, oh, I don't want you to smoke," and he used to smoke still. No, he lighting. assumed that I didn't, didn't because he didn't, smoke, didn't see, see me smoke, smoke. Yeah. when we first met. And it, it's not like here's my CV of all the drugs and smoking yeah, yeah. and alcohol that I do. Do you know what I mean? Oh, okay, I get you. Okay. Okay. No problem. Continue. Yeah. Okay. So back to cheating. Cheating is emotional and mental abuse because if you're cheating, you're lying, you're manipulating, you're gaslighting. And as much as it's not a physical beating, oh my gosh, you still feel the pain. Because I remember when I first found out when my boyfriend cheated on me and I was on the phone to my friend saying, I feel like my heart, uh, someone stabbed me in the heart. It's been ripped out, spat on, trodden on. And yeah. Oh yeah, and my stomach was in knots for days. I didn't eat. Yeah. I genuinely didn't feel hungry, and I'm always hungry. And Dr. Anna Machin, who is an anthropologist at Oxford University, she describes love like this. Love is when you start to empathize with someone and build trust, an attachment relationship. Love is a neurochemical cocktail in your brain full of reward chemicals that make us feel great. When you're apart, you feel pain. It's separation distress. A neurochemical called beta endorphin underpins love, and it's your body's painkiller. 
it's an opiate, it's like morphine. It's what you become addicted to when you're in love with somebody. If you have a little bit of morphine every day and, so and then suddenly that goes when you break up, that will cause physical pain. That's why love hurts and it makes a lot of sense. And since learning that, when I feel a connection with someone, I'm like, Michelle, don't read too much into it. It's your endorphins, <laughs> it's your reward chemicals. And also when you first meet someone, you have to be wary of love bombing, um, which is when someone showers you with attention, affection, gifts, but it's not genuine. There's an ulterior motive. And I noticed this in the Netflix um, series, Dirty John. John would love bomb his wife, Deborah. Uh, and it would be subtle as well, even a small gesture like making a smoothie. And I'm going to share with you the Dirty John trailer now, followed by a clip from Tara Newell, who is Deborah's daughter. She explains love bombing really well. I'm Deborah. I'm John. Hey. You look gorgeous. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> John makes me feel so special. He gives me so much. There's something up with my mom's new boyfriend. Hey. What's in the safe, kiddo? If he's really a bad guy and not just a jerk, mom will see it. Mm-hmm. But what if she doesn't see it? We're having a good time, and I just don't want it to end. I think he's living there with her. John? What the hell? What the police say? I mean, do they know her? No, but do you? Is that supposed to be cute? You slowly disappear I want to talk to you about John. He is not a perfect person. But he loves me. He's very good at lying. Are you looking in there? How dare you? Are you watching me? Maybe I don't know who he really is. Threats, harassment, intimidation. They all say that it's you. What kind of a person does that? You're gonna find out what I am. You should enjoy the time left. That's what's gonna come down to. Only you know if you're really ready for what might happen. What do you mean, what might happen? Whatever happens between us, remember, I love you. Hi guys, my name is Tara Newell. I want to talk to you today about what is love bombing. So love bombing is an attempt to influence a person by demonstrating acts of attention or giving grand gestures or gestures to a person. So example of that would be if they pissed you off or they did something you didn't like, um, or you broke up with them, they would do an elaborate gesture or just bombard you and give you that constant attention to try to win you back. Something they may do is get you flowers. They may even buy you a house. Um, they may even say, okay, let's make a commitment. Let's get engaged. Don't buy into that because you want to see this person fade out of the love bombing. And when that person fades out, that shows their true colors in the end. But when a person, when someone is getting love bombed, you feel so good and you feel these oxytocins. So it's so hard to kind of look at when you're getting loved, bomb, if that makes sense. So in order to figure out when you're getting love bomb, just pay attention, be aware. Notice when someone hurts you and then they get you a gift or they constantly try to win your affection back. See if they're empathetic if you get into a fight. And those are my tips for what to do with love bombing and what is love bombing. In this series of Dirty John with my mom, in the show and in real life, he got her smoothies. He was constantly there for her. He held her purse and that was love bombing for her. He would always be there for her and give her that constant love and affection. So be super wary of that in a relationship, especially if it's in the beginning. 
Be wary if they want to marry you in the beginning. Be wary if the love grows fast in the beginning. Just take a step back and really evaluate things for yourself. Another helpful tip in that scenario is to have a life coach or a therapist that really knows what they're doing and holds you accountable in that situation um, because really when you're in it, you can't see it. So I hope that was helpful for you guys today. Now back to my best friend's experience. Chloe would always hear put downs. You need a better job. You need to earn more money. She'd get compared. Um, she would compare Chloe to her ex saying you're not good enough. And after a while, Chloe started to believe it and it affected her confidence and her self-esteem. And it was disgusting how she was treated. And in hindsight, it says a lot about Julie and her character and any abuser for that matter. It's because anyone who has ever hurt you or mistreated you the way that they have, they're suffering themselves. And I mean that because no person, and I mean no person on this earth will ever treat you the way you've been treated if they are content with themselves. It was a very toxic relationship. Now, a healthy relationship doesn't drag you down. It inspires you to be better. And love isn't enough to sustain a healthy relationship. You also need trust, respect, and boundaries. And I know it's easier said than done, but sometimes we need to stop seeing, I oh, don't, I'll say it again. <laughs> and I know it's easier said than done, but sometimes we need to stop seeing the good in people and start seeing what they show you. When people show you who they are, believe them. When people treat you like they don't care, believe them. So whenever Chloe and her partner would try again with their relationship, things might change for a bit, maybe a week, maybe a month, and that's what kept Chloe hopeful, but the change was only temporary. Chloe didn't tell anyone how bad it got. She downplayed the whole situation. Even me, her best friend, even I didn't realize how bad things had got. And with abusive relationships, they don't get better over time, they escalate. And a lot of people keep abuse to themselves for many different reasons. They're in denial, they feel embarrassed, they feel hopeful that things are going to get better, they're scared to be alone, uh, they want to protect their children from the abuser, or they rely on their partner financially and they can't afford to leave them. Mel B talks more about this in her book, Brutally. The reasons why Chloe stayed longer was because of the kids. Her partner would use the kids as a bargaining tool to get Chloe back in and would guilt trip her. It was all coercive control. And bearing in mind, they're her stepkids, so I can only imagine it's a million times harder when they're your own. A lot of people do stay in toxic relationships for the kids because there is that stigma of a broken home. But you've got to weigh it out being a single parent or having them children live in a home and witness domestic abuse. Because even if you think they don't see it, mm -hmm. children are like sponges. They're gonna hear it, yeah. they're gonna feel the tension, they can see your body language, and that's not a healthy environment to be raised in. Also, they could be normalized to it mm -hmm. and end up in similar relationships when they're older. Yeah. And I also hear people talk about their abusive partner saying, but he's a good dad, a good mother. Yeah. But if you're a good parent and a good person, you wouldn't be you wouldn't abusing your partner. Yeah, yeah, because because I've I've got a, I've got a similar sorry red flag. Um, I've got a similar. I know I, I know a friend basically who he's a male, and he's um, his partner, the female. You should do that to, um, a lot to him. Yeah, and she used to abuse him and then use the kids, kids. as in yeah, like if you go, you're not going to see the kids and. Like, just, like, things like that for no reason, like, she'll just get, she'll just to have, that have, like, an outburst and it's, like, kick him out and then, like, you're not seeing your kids and he'll have, he'll feel like he has to go back to the house right. to see his kids. And the whole time I was, like, you can't, you can't live like that. That's, like, it's, 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 it's having an effect on you without you even knowing because he's, like, oh, it doesn't matter, like, like, that's just how she is, like, right. and I was, like, but... The thing is, if she does that in front of the kids, without you being there, that no longer happens. It may be on the phone, but your kids don't have to witness yeah. that abuse, that physical abuse as well, like mm. in front of them. Yes, she may phone you in front of them because it, it seems that's like that's her character. That's even bad as well. It's, yeah, of course, though. but the physical as well, yeah, like yeah, she used yeah. to like try and scratch him and go crazy. But the, the longer you stay away from it out of the house, it may calm down. But as long as you stay there, 
you're always going to get into his problems it's because it's like a recurring, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. every year there's multiple times like he'll come and stay with me and so forth and it's just like it's not getting better, it's even mm. getting worse. Like, mm. And now it's making you do certain things that is making you distant away from her where you two's relationship's not working. So what's the point of being in there just solely for the kids but right. then the problem is still happening in yeah. front of the kids so you need to weigh out the odds and see what makes more sense and it took him, it took him years before yeah. he actually it had does. the strength to like leave leave and be like you know what like i'll rather not see my kids like e even though that's not what happened yeah, yeah because yeah. it only lasted for so long because he's a good father like a brilliant father yeah and he will always see his kids and she knows that she needs him as much as he wants to see his kids anyway regardless so okay. she's just using that against him mm. to like i don't know force him back in and throw him away force him back in and like so she has the control and the power mm, still, but coercive control. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's it's quite. You can see how yeah, it's really common for people course, to yeah, end yeah, up yeah, yeah. in them situations. Of course, yeah. And that's what I'm, that's why I said earlier, like that's Chloe struggled with that, and that's her stepkids. So yeah, yeah. Can oh. you imagine when it's your real kids? Real kids like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can I continue? Of course. Okay. So you'll like this one then. So you shouldn't ever invest in a relationship that you wouldn't want for your own child mm -hmm. or your niece or nephew. Layla Doughty is a single parent and she talks a lot about this on her Instagram and YouTube. She's very knowledgeable about domestic abuse and red flags. I highly recommend everyone follows her. She's fucking amazing. You don't need to thank the people that hurt you for making you a stronger, better person. Don't give them that much power. You are a stronger, better person because you were able to rise time and time again. And that has got nothing to do with the people that hurt you and has got everything to do with the power that is inside you. And she says about her daughter, I want her to grow up knowing a happy, healthy mother rather than one who stayed just for the sake of keeping a family together. I want to be there every step of the way, holding her hand through life. I want to teach her that abuse is not acceptable, no matter who the perpetrator is. Leaving was definitely the best thing I could have done for her. I don't worry about her coming from a broken home because our home isn't broken. It's full of love, care, respect and safety. You are not a bad mother because you have chosen to break the cycle of domestic abuse. Please don't ignore red flags. Please get help and get out. Abuse is not your fault. Now, another reason why people stay in abusive relationships is because of something called trauma bonds which is an emotional bond which stems from cycles of abuse. The following are some indications of having a trauma bond. So when you look at their je jealousy as a sign of love, mm -hmm. um, when you deny or justify the abuse, when you want to protect your partner and you want to fix them, when you're holding on to hope for change and euphoric recall when you only remember the good times. Mm -hmm. Trauma bonding is when you're so heavily attached to a toxic person that you are willing to maintain a relationship, even at the expense of yourself, for the few and far between highs. Your brain gets highly addicted to the habitual ups and downs of oxytocin, dopamine and serotonin. That even when the relationship ends, you will seek and crave the person or become obsessive or seek similar people in order to get your fix. It's the rewiring of your neuro neurological pathways of love turning against itself. The loss of the love makes you crave them more. You're dependent in the same way a heroin addict is. When the person you go to for comfort and relief is the same person who is destroying you, that is a trauma bond. It's so powerful, it actually stops you from seeing their behavior. And Tara Newell said in a podcast recently that she was raped by her boyfriend, hit by a car, and she would still miss him. And that's the thing with abusive relationships. It's like a drug. Your partner will make you feel like you need them, like you can't live without them. Yeah, yeah. Feeding you bullshit like no one's going to love you the way I do. Yeah. It's all brainwashing and very yeah. similar to Stockholm Syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I know it's easier said than done when it comes to breakups. Layla said it's not in a walk in the park um, once you leave. Even after the separation, it's common it's common to still experience coercive control where your ex will still try and control you. And what I've seen, I've noticed over the years seeing relationships break up is that it's hard, mm. but it's not impossible. And most importantly, even though it's hard, it's 100% worth it. And I always hear um, victims and survivors of domestic abuse say, if they could go back in time, they 
would have told someone sooner. Yeah. Um, I think it's really beneficial for your mental health and your future to find someone you trust and confide in them. Even speaking to a helpline, Refuge is our uh, national domestic abuse helpline. They're available 24 seven and they've trained people to help like in these situations. And they're not judgmental. They provide a lot of information and support, even when it comes to like housing, protecting the children, safety planning, living with your partner and leaving and then leaving your partner. Now, just as a heads up, I've spoken about this before in previous vlogs, but I'll say it again. Just because someone has been through the same experiences and trauma as you does not mean they have the right advice or words to say. They can even victim blame you. I've experienced it myself. And if this happens, please try not to take it personally. How that person speaks to you is a reflection of how they speak to themselves. And they probably haven't processed or done as much work yet from their own experiences and trauma. So it's really important that you get the right support because you will need support. Um, you know, my acts of violence have been very sporadic over the years and my mental health and post-traumatic symptoms have completely changed my life. Mm. So God knows how, you know, people are able to cope and move forward who are experiencing this every day, every week, every month. Like, I really feel for them. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you, by you telling that one person and saying it out loud, it helps you realise what's going on is not right. Yeah. And I feel like once you learn your worth, you'll have that light bulb moment and see that you deserve better. Yeah. You can still love your abuser, but love yourself more. Oh yeah, of course. Now, when Chloe had her light bulb moment, it wasn't even over something big. They had this one particular ar argument and something just clicked and she never went back. Mm. And Chloe said at the time she thought she was in love, but she wasn't, like everything was so clouded. And also with the psychological abuse, she felt worthless. And when you're in it, you can't see it and you can't see a way out. Here are some things that you feel when you're in a narcissistic relationship. You feel like you are the one that is needy, insecure and demanding. You feel like you are the one that's creating all the problems in the relationship. You walk on eggshells and monitor everything you say and do. You feel worthless, you feel not pretty enough, you lack self-esteem and you feel drained. You feel like an object that is replaceable. You feel like you're not worthy of love. You feel suffocated and silent. It was only until she came out of the relationship properly um, she could see the light and really recognise all of her, um, her partner's narcissistic traits. For example, being entitled, not taking accountability, <laughs> um, blaming others, mm -hmm. degrading your partner, devaluing them, manipulation, silent treatment, double standards, and playing victim, and playing victim to circumstances that they created. And you have to be so careful because there are a lot of subtle abusers out there who can fake empathy really well too. I never had a single thread of remorse about it. Okay, and that, okay, so I had no remorse about the fact that no. I was ruining people's days with my conduct and honestly no empathy yeah. for how your conduct affected those people in those jobs. No, I'm sorry, to have it seems some like emotion he about, Yeah, it right? seems like he cares. About a what? A little bit. <laughs> Well, it seems like he cares maybe, about his, his behavior. Or maybe okay. how he's being perceived. Exactly. Yeah. There you he go. He cares about how, how he's being he perceived. Cares about how he's being perceived. Was he worrying about those people no, who were getting hurt at work? No, he was worried about having to hear mm -hmm. about how you were perceiving mm -hmm. his actions. They say narcissists want your obedience, not your love. And I think the more you learn about traits and warning signs, the more you can see them for who they truly are. And like I said earlier, this, this isn't just about romantic relationships. My old manager had these traits yeah. and he had such a way with words, I really fell for his lies and believed him yeah. until I saw the light and that's when I had to up my boundaries. Yeah. How do we interact with narcissists in our lives yeah. when we can't necessarily yeah. walk away from them? People are watching this saying, okay, obviously I know what I should do, I should walk. But we don't have that luxury of just walking away from everyone. And so then people feel like, what do I just need to keep things the way they are? No, you don't. Okay. This is really a game of number one and above all else, radical acceptance. 
Radical acceptance is understanding this is not going to change. Personality Woo! styles do not change, mm. okay? Ooh. So the only thing you can do is work on your approach to this and your expectations. Those expectations need to be realistic. Right? Even okay. if it's just like, okay, I'm going through the same cycle, but now I'm protecting myself yes. emotionally yes. because yes. I know what's actually going on. Yeah, Correct. recognizing what you're dealing with. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So how does one do that? There's a technique I use. I call it the DEEP technique. Okay. You know, so remember it. DEEP stands for don't defend, mm. don't engage, don't explain, and don't personalize this. Woo! Okay, so you think about how many times you wow. go deeper in with someone, and that's why I say yes. deep, like, like, no, 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 I never said that, or it didn't happen that way. You almost yep. need to detach. Completely. In fact, there's a name for that disengagement. It's called gray rocking. Being as boring as a gray rock, you become ah. almost inert, like right? You're like completely uninteresting. You're like, mm-hmm. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So they Got have it. nothing to feed off. So of. they have nothing yeah. to feed off. And now initially, and this is one thing I want to warn everyone watching this. Initially, when you go gray rock on a narcissist, they get really mad. I was going to say because yeah. that makes mm -hmm. you look like. Almost like you're being condescending, mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. But you can well, you're not, that, you can that's not gray rock. You can. This isn't yeah. gray yeah. rock. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. You're trying to make yourself boring. Right. So if you can withstand the initial gray rock escalation, yeah. they're actually going to become disinterested in you. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're not feeding them with something we call narcissistic supply. Mm. Feeding their ego, whether it's with validation or mm. with arguments. Yeah. Because for narcissistic people, winning is everything. Yeah. They want to come out on top. They want to know they won the argument. So if you give them the argument, they're going to see it through to the very, very end. Yeah. But if you don't give them the argument, they're going to lose interest in you and move to the person they can have the argument with. with. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's a lot of like, yeah, sure, okay, I got that. I, I hear, I can hear your point of view and you don't even offer yours. So it's kind of a yeah. half of a relationship, yeah. right? You're not even in it anymore. I, they don't know how you feel. They yeah. don't know how you think because they don't care. Yeah. Yeah. They don't care. It's also about no longer sharing of yourself with them. Yeah. You don't tell them the good things that happen in your life. You don't tell them about the bad, bad things, things that happen yeah. in your life because they're, they're going to make fun of the good things and they're going to criticize you even more for the bad things. Yeah. Right. So you have to set boundaries you have to set and limitations. Huge boundaries. And that's the biggest piece. If you're going to stay in a relationship with a narcissist, it's about boundaries. Gray rock's a form of boundary. Right. But I don't want people to watch this thing. I'm going to try these techniques, so and then maybe I'm going to get through right. to the narcissist. No. That's not going to happen. So you're doing this for you. To protect yeah, yourself. Yeah, this is to mm -hmm. protect yourself. Can, can I just say something quickly? Of course. Um, with, with this, I know I'm jumping a bit ahead. Go for it. But with these type of people, mm. do you reckon, because obviously the whole, the whole aim is for people to acknowledge what's going on and to like walk away and benefit themselves and not be a part of that kind of relationship if it's happening to them. Abuse, yeah. So if everybody had that mindset and was easily... We'd all be single. No, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's very true, but you'll be, you'll be happily single rather, mm. than, the, rather than unhappy and in, in a relationship, a relationship. but my, my point is these people only exist because they have the people that they that they're feeding off of do you know what I'm saying? So if they if everybody was like, nah, I'm not having that walk away. Yeah, they, I'm having they that walk wouldn't away. have anyone to torment. Exactly, they wouldn't have anybody to torment. Yeah. So would you, do you think that would change their ways because they're not able no, to grasp on they it? Would just, they'll still have it, but they'll yeah, be they'll still this have like... It, but they wouldn't have anyone to do it with because they say, yeah. Dr. Romani talks about this, about grey rocking is like... Mm -hmm be monotone with your abuser because okay. they want a reaction. So you're like, all right, all right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's like all right. me. So, all right, all right, cool, mate. All yeah, right, sweet. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But again, mm. I'll get into it in a minute. You, you can't tell an abuser straight away. Do you oh, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if it's, abu if it's abusive as well. You're a bit more like, what can I say? What can I say? Mm, you don't, don't want to get put in that position, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so another red flag to look out for is victim mentality. Abusers usually have a sob story, I've heard this so many times, a trauma from their past or their childhood, so you can feel sorry for them. But feeling bad for them is part of their game. I hate that one. <laughs> I hate it, man. I've been through it, well, so yeah. sorry I've been to my parents now, mate. And, but the thing is, whatever they've been through does not justify their behavior or them abusing you. Um, and it's important to remember that mental health is not an excuse either. If your partner is abusive and has mental health is issues, they have two separate issues mm -hmm. or problems. Um, there are a lot of people out there who have mental health issues or problems, I don't know the word, and are not abusive. Dr. Jessica Taylor said in a recent podcast, 
you can't use psychiatry, trauma, disorders, childhood and mental health to excuse abusers. What we should be doing is calling bullshit on all of it and saying no. Male violence is committed by men in a patriarchy with entitlement because they make an active choice to harm women and girls because they fucking want to. Wait, wait, there's no, I know she's talking about, I know there's, oh, it relates oh, okay. to women as well, yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm saying what? it word for word from her podcast, okay, okay, you know cool. what I mean? But no obviously problem. it relates to all genders. Yeah, yeah. There's no disorder there. There's no mental health issue. There's nothing in their childhood that caused them to do that. They chose to do it because they wanted to. Mm -hmm. And the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. Yeah. I know people who have experienced terrible childhoods, physical abuse, sexual abuse, traumas in adult life, but they don't abuse their partners yeah. or their loved ones or people in general. Yeah. Your traumas and your past is not a valid excuse. If you're being abused, that person is choosing to abuse you. Like none of it is of your course. fault. Yeah. And please know it's normal to think, oh, but he or she, that person was so different in the beginning. Where did that person go? Truth is that person wasn't ever real. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't their true selves. And a good example of this, I haven't even, I haven't asked you about this actually, is um, Chris Watts, who murdered his pregnant wife and two daughters. Wow. There's a documentary about it called American Murder, The Family Next Door. It's on Netflix, have you seen it? No, I've heard, I've, I think I saw, I saw an advert on it, but I've not well, seen it. It really is The Family Next Door. Yeah. Like, um, you see in a documentary how happy the wife was in the beginning, how yeah, normal yeah. their life was. He just looked like a regular guy. Mm -hmm. um, and even you see him talking to the news, like the day after or a couple of days after they, he killed them, saying like, oh, he has no idea where they are. This is a nightmare. Oh, wow. He's an absolute fruitcake. That's a psychopath. That's a psychopath. <laughs> like. He's actually standing in front of the, the I know, camera. And be like, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah. I'm gonna share it, that yeah. clip. I have no inclination to where they're at right now. Like, I've exhausted like every friend that I know of and every friend that I have has called friends that Shanann has that maybe I didn't know about. I have no idea like where they went. And it doesn't, it's just earth shattering. I don't feel like this is even real right now. It's like a nightmare that I just can't wake up from. I want her back so bad. I want those kids back. And I've noticed over many years, not with everyone, but a lot of couples, as soon as, there are, as soon as there are ties within the relationship, whether it be a marriage, a mortgage, a baby, or a business, um, the dynamic changes. Yeah. And, you know, when they think, because the dynamic changes, they think you're not going anywhere, that's when their true colours come to the surface. Mm. And you have to think, when you see them true colours, do you love who they actually are, or do you love who you want them to be? Yeah. And when you break up, do you miss them? Or do you miss the idea of the future you expected to have with them? Mm -hmm. Ayanla said in an interview recently, you don't get to tell people how to love you. You get to choose whether or not you want to participate in the way they love. And it's so true. Well, thumbs up to that. that uh, <laughs> She's comment, amazing. That um, hitting is not love. Mm -hmm. Mind games are not love. Put downs are not love. Controlling is not love. Mm -hmm. And if they do it often, it's not a mistake, it's their behaviour. Yeah. Now, talking about behaviour, I know I said, uh, uh, mentioned earlier how I used to gaslight my ex. And I, if you know me personally, you might be thinking, oh, well, if Rochelle changed, maybe my partner can change too. The thing is, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. It's not your job to fix it. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> um, it's not your job to fix them. They need to want to help themselves. And a person can have good qualities and still be toxic for you. Like, yeah. my ex had good qualities, I had good qualities, but we weren't good for each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised we lasted as long as we did. How long was it? On and off for just under four years. Mm. But considering when did, start, when did it start going off? Um, Pretty much two, a month in. Oh, well, oh. But I was in going through, a, I shouldn't say but, at the time, yeah. I'd just come just had my divorce. Okay, so relying like on a rebound. Maybe. No, don't say that. It's a rebound. If you're watching, it's a rebound, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I genuinely loved him. Yeah, yeah. I was just in a bad way. I should have been yeah. single because I was suppressing my heartache through the divorce with lots of alcohol and drugs and da-da-da. Mm -hmm. I went in the, I didn't have the capacity to be in a relationship. Really, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Anyway, talking about that and with me I felt feel like I had a couple years where I 
went off the rails and wasn't acting myself. Mm. And when I'd done the work on myself, like when I became, yeah, 2017, um, and slowly came out of it, I took accountability for my actions. I admitted to lying. I apologised to my loved ones, my boyfriend, my friends. Um, there were lots of tears and more importantly, there was lots of change. And I believe the reason why they kept me in their lives was because actions speak louder than words. They saw the change in me and my life. And for people who say sorry without change behavior, that is manipulation. And it's really important to learn the difference, to listen to your gut feelings and remember, time will tell if they're being truthful or not. So before I wrap it up, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I have quite a few actually. To Go be for it. I was going to say. I'm good at remembering. Actually, do you know what? Actually, I actually forgot. Because oh, you know, I was listening so much that I forgot what I was, what my actual point was before. Cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to interrupt your flow. Of course, you interrupt me. Um, That's what you're here for. Uh, what was I gonna say now? I've actually forgot. I, I'll remember it in a bit if it if it does come to mind. Trauma anyway. bonds, gaslighting, That's love funny. bombing. Uh, when someone blames their mental health or their past. Yeah. And it gives that an excuse. Chris Watts, the American murder. Yeah. Dynamic but changes with on, marriage, mortgage, baby business. Yeah, that that definitely, that definitely, that last one definitely is a it is a big thing because that happens a lot, especially especially with kids for some reason. Like, like you have a you have a child with somebody. Obviously, if you're not, I wouldn't say if you're not married, it, it makes it it doesn't make it like valuable as much. Like you know, it was meant to be. Do you know what I mean? But for some reason, when kids get involved, for me personally, because I've had, because I've had children. I understand why that may happen because obviously when a child is born, you focus on the child, you solely focus on the child. So it's like you're you're in a lovely relationship, you and the part you and your partner's been together however many years, could be months, whatever the situation is. And then as soon as the baby comes, it's like, oh, you're no longer a priority. The mm, baby's you're a priority. not number one anymore. So then everybody not 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 just not just the female, the man the male might even feel like he's not wanted or yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. loved as much priority because now you've got a bigger priority than you yourself in like as the relationship mm. it's like both of you're sitting there and it's like okay feeding time this time like mm. who's gonna do this who's gonna do night feeds and it's like it becomes like a business and a job right yeah and you forget about the actual relationship like you're like taking you, time yeah, for exactly you two and a partner have had date some, nights or whatever you yeah, want exactly. to do it's, it's, especially if you haven't got a good like and if you're network. tired like if you ain't got a good support network and you're doing it like all constantly, by yourself. all by yourself, like you and the partner, yeah, like it, it can become draining and become like a full time. Well, it's a full time job regardless, but no, I hear it. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, so I understand why that may change the dynamic of certain relationships, and yeah, you liked it when I said you don't get to tell people how to love you. You get to choose whether or not you want to participate in the way they love. Yeah, because that because that all that also becomes a big thing as well, like. I've been in I've been in many relationships and I feel like uh, over time, even though I've, for me personally, I've always been the same person. Yeah. When I've met these girls, I've always been the same person. Mm. But I think it's like they, they try to now Hold have you. into themselves is like, oh, I don't want you hanging around with like because yeah, I don't want you hanging around with this person. Hurry. I don't want you hanging around with that person because then I feel less loved and you're spending more time with that person. But for me personally, it's like okay, I understand compromise. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then I also believe in you shouldn't try and change me. Like, if you feel that this is uncomfortable for you now yeah. and you've had to say it more than, like, more, not even more than once, but multiple times and you, you're thinking about it, like a, lot, like, a lot, then you need, like, like you said, you need to feel, like, is it worth me being in this relationship or is it worth me, like, sticking to this if it's making me feel unhappy? Mm. And for me, I, I've always been like that, to be honest. Like, you can feel free to do what you want to do. If I feel that this is not for me anymore, I'll walk away. Mm. But I've got a good, I've got a good, like, strong mindset with certain things. Obviously, other people aren't. And that's, that's what I was going to say is because even sometimes, like you say, financially, some people may think they need to stay in a relationship or it could be socially because now they haven't got friends or now they've that. lost. Because you know a lot of times when people ha get relationships, especially, not especially with females, but uh, for so. me personally, more so with females, when they get in a relationship, they, they throb off their friends and it's like, right. I'm in love and relationship, my yeah. friends like, and, and I see it all, all the time. I tell my girl, my girl mates, like, like, how's, oh, I don't talk to any, like, I don't uh. really talk to her, but like, why don't you talk to her? Because you've got a fella. Like, right. what's happened? So, you know, like when that happens, they feel like they need to latch on because if they lose that, they, they can't got, really go, they ain't got friends anymore. They ain't got a social life, so they can't go back to that life that they once had. So they feel like they have to be in it. And also, abusers. So not saying that, like obviously a lot of people do that out of choice, but abusers will actually isolate 
their partner, from their friends and family. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the financial thing, that's one thing that I highly recommend with everyone is that keep your financials se separate. Yeah. Finances yeah, separate. separate. Yeah. Because that makes things easier. And also, the mm. whole thing with when you've got a strong mindset, it's also, we're quite similar in that aspect where it's like there's a difference between feeling lonely and mm. being alone. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. people can, oh, I, I want a boyfriend, I want a girlfriend, I'm lonely. Or you can have the attitude of, or the mindset of, I'm alone, I'm free, <laughs> do whatever I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's, yeah, learning that. So yeah, finished. Yeah. So if you're resonating with anything we've spoken about today, please try your best to open up to someone, even a helpline. A lot of these people, you speak to our survivors themselves. Try your best to find the courage to start over again. Mm -hmm. This time you're not starting from scratch, you're starting from experience. And can I say that goes for <laughs> men and women, by the way. Yes. So, yes. Just, that's for, for, all the, for all the men out there, if you are feeling like you are being abused mentally or physically, then Everything. also reach out because a lot of the time men don't speak about it and this mm. is how we get the, the, the strong number in male suicide, men, yeah, rates. suicide rates and mental health and stuff. So please men speak up as well if that is the case. Yeah. Thank you. Yay. Yay. I can sit here and explain every violent incident to you how it happened and how much it hurt. But the gaslighting and the mental abuse is the hardest thing to put into writing. And as a victim, you feel like no one will understand. And at times, I felt like my story doesn't matter either because maybe it hasn't been violent enough. But those who have experienced it, they'll get it. And hopefully, there will be a part of my story that lands with another victim and a survivor out there who will now know that they're not alone. In time, with the rest of the community, I hope I can make people see that abuse isn't just physical. Abuse is verbal, emotional, coercive, financial, gaslighting, trauma bonds. Every push, every shove, every threat, every punch in the wall, every broken window, every damaged item are all acts of violence and not a single one is ever okay or normal in any relationship that you have. Minimising abuse is so dangerous. It's exactly how abuse escalates from insults to strangulations to scars for life. And it's how many women end up dead at the hands of their abuser. One incident of gaslighting is too many. One threat of violence is too many. Nothing can ever diminish what you went through and what you endured. Strength doesn't lie in not crying or hiding how you feel. Strength is saying that no matter how many times I break, I will always pick myself up and rise again and again and again. So please ladies, don't ignore red flags. Please get help and get out. Please help me change the narratives for other victims and survivors of domestic abuse.